Well, ladies, should we go see our girls? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right, what's the first thing we do? Coop shoes. Coop shoes. Coop shoes on. What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and I get a lot of questions about my chicken coop here on this channel. So we're going to talk about the economics of the chicken coop today. I'm going to give you guys a little idea of what work goes into it on a daily basis. And I have my little helpers here. They are going to help me out. Gigi, you want to zoom in here on what we have? This is their food mix here. It cost me a little over a dollar a day to keep them fed. It's a mix of this, these uh, laying pellets. Um, I've got this corn. You may recognize this corn from the video when I filled up the kiddie pool full of corn. Well, nothing goes to waste here. We're feeding that to our chickens. We also have some sunflower seeds that I feed them. Sunflower seeds are full of a lot of oil and fat. Helps them get a little meaty before the winter. I want, to, want the girls to put on some weight. And I also sprinkle in some little pebbles for their gizzards and a little bit of diatomaceous earth just to help keep them from getting infections. And then we also bring them a little bit of scratch grains, right? Yeah. All right we'll bring them a little bit of this corn here. So just to give you a little idea while we're walking out there about the economics of this. I sank about $5,000 all in on the cost of the chicken coop, the run, and a lot of the other materials I had to buy to beef up the security of this because I didn't want to lose my birds to foxes and hawks and raccoons. There's a lot of predators out here. Now, a dozen eggs when I started this whole thing was about $2 a dozen. Right now, eggs are about $3.50 a dozen at the supermarket. So already inflation is in my favor, if you will. Now these girls, first things first, having chickens is a lot more work than you think it is. All right, and that's, I learned that lesson the hard way. They're very excited to see us. They gather around the door. They're gonna come running out as soon as I open the door. That's okay, but what do we do? We say one eye on the sky, right? Yep. See any hawks? See anything that's gonna hurt yep. our girls? No, sky's clear. All right, girls, you're gonna do bodyguard. And out they come. Here is the procession. <laughs> so Mia's throwing some scratch corn in there right now. Just keeps them from flooding out here. Sprinkling a little bit of the grit. I'm gonna bring them that bucket of weeds from the garden. You can leave that open for a second. See, the weeds is nice. It's kind of like eating their vegetables. <laughs> they also like to scratch around in it. Dig in there for bugs and stuff like that. <laughs> Call that a boredom buster. Something that keeps them entertained. And they love bacon fat. They're fighting over the bacon fat right now. So we have 15 hens and one rooster in our flock. Who's that? Who do you have right there, Danny? Squeaky. So that's Squeaky, and that's that's our boy, right? That's our roo. And she's a good rooster, right? Yep. Yeah. And what, what is it about Squeaky? Why is he so nice when roosters are usually very mean? I've been holding him since he was a baby. That's right. Danny comes down and holds him every day and it helps him to be more mellow. If you don't give roosters a lot of time, they get aggressive and they'll peck at your ankles every time you come in the coop. But Daniela has pet him and held him every day since he was a chick. He was actually a science project in her fourth grade classroom where they hatch chicks and they bought home a permission slip to bring them home. It's one of the reasons we started this mess. And Mia, who do you have there? Wendy. That's Wendy. Wendy is the other one that came home with Squeaky. These two white ones, they're leghorns. So Wendy is the youngest bird in the coop. She's not laying yet. And how do we know Wendy's not laying yet, girls? No white eggs. No white eggs. All these brown girls here, these are isobrowns. They lay brown eggs. So Wendy, we know, is not laying yet. She will be laying soon. But Wendy likes to sing. She's a noisy bird. So should we check the nesting boxes? Sure. See if we got any eggs? I got Fussy. All right, you got Fussy? Yeah, that light one there. Fussy doesn't like to be held, hence the name. Well, she's sweet, but... Now, how many are we hoping for? Twelve. We want twelve. Have we gotten a dozen yet? Nope. No, we haven't. All right, who's going to count? One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do we have any more? Eleven. Did we get it? Twelve! We got twelve? Twelve! Our first dozen? That's awesome. How fortuitous. <laughs> These are, this one's very small. 
Yeah. Now be careful, we don't want to break any, right? Mia, hold that be ca very carefully, honey. Two okay. hands. Be a team, guys. One person hold the tray. So we have the nesting boxes. They seem to favor a couple of the nesting boxes over the other ones, but a dozen eggs for one day. That's not bad. <laughs> now, a dozen eggs at the supermarket right now is going for about $3.50. And I'm feeding them for about a dollar a day. So, you know, about $2.50 net every day. That's not bad. Again, though, no, $5,000 initial outlay for this. So you're still looking at like almost seven years to break even on this project. So all in cost and everything like that. Financially, this is not like a quit your day job endeavor here. All right. You're not going to get rich with chickens, folks. Um, but there's been a couple of other benefits that we can talk about. I'm going to put their feed in here. Now, I have their feeder inside the coop because of bird flu. I keep their food inside the coop so that the native birds don't interact with them too much and it doesn't attract the bird flu. And then another one of the expenses is these little wood chips here. These are pine shavings. A bag of these is like five bucks at Tractor Supply. Um, I buy that, they like it for the nesting boxes. It keeps them productive, keeps them clean. I tried using grass clippings, dry grass clippings is bedding and it stunk. So this is healthier for the birds, keeps the smell down and it keeps them producing. And I saw this on YouTube also, put golf balls in the nesting boxes when the birds are young and it kind of trains them. This is where the eggs go. So hence the uh, title list mixed in with the eggs. If you're gonna get a chicken coop, another thing you're gonna need to get is a compost pile. But this right here, this stuff, this is enough nitrogen to make a Dutch politician blush. This stuff is next year's vegetable garden, all right? Every time I rake out the coop or clean out those shavings, I get all this good fertilizer, all right? And I put it in these bins here. I also have weeds and yard waste and stuff like that goes in here. So I think eventually I'm gonna start a bigger garden. I might even try next year growing food for these birds. And all of this is gonna be instrumental in that. Where did this come from? Did we plant corn here? No. No, we didn't. So what's up? Why does corn suddenly just grow here? I don't know. Where do you think it came from? Scratch. The scratch corn, right? That we threw in there? So we didn't plant corn here this year. I guess when we were throwing a scratch corn in one day, a piece bounced and landed right here. And we had some corn just randomly sprouted. I didn't time it or anything like that. You can see the birds peck at it through the fence. Um, so what I think I'm probably going to take a shot at next year is I'm going to take some of that feed corn, I'm going to till this area around here, I'm going to mix in a whole bunch of the bedding and the chicken waste. That's my songbird there. And I think we're going to turn this patch into a little corn and sunflower patch and try to grow a little bit. Again, this is just the chicken waste, so if I can use the chicken waste as fertilizer, then uh, I can use that material to get even more eggs third time around, right? Just keep cycling that material right back through. I give them chicken feed, they give me eggs, their poop gives me fertilizer, I get more chicken feed, rinse, repeat. Emphasis on the rinse. This is a dirty operation. You get messy doing chickens. So one of the considerations is security is a big deal with a chicken coop. Like I mentioned, I have a lot of predators and I don't know if you can tell if you zoom in here, you can see there's two different kinds of wire in play. I uh, gotta send a shout out to Chris Taylor over at Financial Prepper who recommended this to me. I bought this run initially and it only came with this thin chicken wire here and apparently the foxes and the raccoons will just rip right through that. So I had to add this heavier gauge garden fence around that on top of the chicken wire all the way around the coop. And then I actually added it all the way down and underground and it comes out about two feet to here beneath the grass. I don't know if you remember the video I made where I was digging the trench all around the run here. And that's because foxes and raccoons will dig right under this or try to rip right through this. Oh, you just pecked my fingers right through the fence. That must be pecky. It's not. So security is a big deal. You don't want to spend all this effort to raise chicks and spend all this time out here with them just to feed the foxes. Excuse me, ladies. You can see they're already scratching around at the weeds that we bought them. Should we open up their water, their water bucket? You want to pour that in, Mia? Go ahead. Very good. Pour that one in. Now, Mia, what's this thing that this bucket is hanging from here? Hanging from a chain. From a chain. But with this whole wooden thing, what do we, what do we call this? Jungle gym. The jungle gym, right? We built this, why? Just so they had something to climb on and play on, right? Yeah. Yeah, just 
Again, boredom is a big thing with chickens. You want to keep their little brains active, give them things to climb on, jump on, play with. The more their brains are active, the more productive egg layers they are. Plus, you get happier birds. By the way, guys, I have a link down in the description below to Financial Prepper. That's Chris Taylor's channel. There's my rooster crowing in the background. Financial Prepper has helped me out a lot with building this coop. He gave me some ideas about ways to beef up my security and things that I can do. So, Chris, do me a favor. Watch this video. Heck, do a reaction. Tell me everything I'm doing wrong here, and I'll fix it. I'm still new to this, and I'm learning, and I'm open to ideas. And all you other folks watching, you see something that I'm doing wrong or something I could do better, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Like I said, about 5000 bucks all in cost for the coop and the run and the extra security and everything. Now, if you're just starting out a chicken coop, it doesn't need to be that expensive because optics is important in this neighborhood, right? This I have neighbors that are pretty close, so I couldn't build a big eyesore back here. Plus, uh, my camera girl here, Gigi, she wanted something that looked a little nicer in the backyard. So a lot of people I've seen, you can convert an old shed or like an old playhouse into a chicken coop very easily save a lot of money i didn't do that because cosmetics was a factor here. so that drove my cost up but just the egg cost alone right now with the price of eggs i'm looking at like seven years to break even and that says nothing about all the work involved so this isn't just a financial decision that's important you're you're not going to save yourself that much money with a chicken coop you're not going to get rich doing it now there's a couple things i do get i get an insurance policy right we're seeing stories out of Europe about supermarkets that are empty. We had this big scare earlier this year about this bird flu and it was gonna drive egg prices up. All kinds of stories about farm crop yields dropping globally. So this is an insurance policy against food insecurity. You should jump out of your hands. Mm -hmm. So I get a little bit of peace of mind having this here. All right, if there's ever like an SHTF scenario, I've got a reliable source of protein here with my girls. Uh, the other thing I get, you'll notice, is family time here. Right? This is time, every day we do this, all right? the way it goes, they come back from camp or they come back from school. I'm in front of the computer, usually making a video for you guys or answering comments on YouTube or during research for the next one. And one of these two comes up to me and says, Daddy, do you want to go see our ladies? And I drop what I'm doing and we come out here, what, about 15 minutes every day, maybe 20 minutes a day? They <laughs> <laughs> got you again, eh, man? So, there's been that benefit, all right? The quality time with the kids, the family time, and it's, it's hard to put a dollar value on that because it gets them to put down the iPads, get off of the devices. Um, you know, they're not in front of a screen. We're not spending money to go out to a movie theater or to go to some bounce about place or something like that. So it's offsetting other costs elsewhere. It's that intangible stuff that it's, it's hard to put a dollar value on that, but it's definitely made this project worthwhile. Like this one here. There's a little chicken whisperer now, aren't you? Yes, you are. And which one do you have here? Pecky. This is Pecky? Now you notice, Pecky has a name. And I have to caution you against that. Because uh, a lot of the... A lot of the math that went into this decision was thrown out the window the second these girls started getting named. So, you can't always name the chickens because, uh, well, then they become pets and not a source of food. So we're still working on the retirement plan with, for when these girls stop laying, but they just started laying about a month ago and now we're already getting a dozen today now. And we have at least one more hen that isn't laying yet. So, you know, it looks like we're gonna be averaging about a dozen eggs a day. That's pretty good. Um, oh, and who do you have there? Wendy. You got Wendy again. She's, she's the one that's not laying yet, right? She's the youngest hen here. She's also the, the noisiest. Leghorns like to sing. So, would I recommend a chicken coop at home? Definitely, absolutely. I mean, you can look right here. Obviously, this is great. Um, do I recommend it as a financial decision only? Definitely not. All right, so there are ways to do it cheaper than I did and make it more lucrative, but this is not, you're not gonna quit your day job doing this. Um, but again, if I had it to do all over again, I would totally do this again because this has been great. All right, girls, anything you wanna say? These chickens are mm, clucky. Don't like me. They <laughs> love you. They just flap out of your this wings is, a little bit. This is clucky. That's clucky. Oh, hello, yeah. clucky. By the way, Mia, come here. Look at the camera. Show them your hat, guys. I just want to let you know that this video is not sponsored by Tractor Supply, but it should be, right? Tractor Supply, call me. <laughs> Let's work this out, right? Let's make this work. Yeehaw. And girls, where do we go today? Where do we go to buy pine shavings? Jack 
supply. Tractor supply. Come on, guys. All right. Got to pay the bills somewhere, right? So, like I said, guys, long story short, I would absolutely do this all over again, but not just as a financial decision in a vacuum because probably you're looking at a break-even proposition right here, mm -hmm. but there's been a lot of other benefits that you can't put a price tag on. Till next time, live small and dream big.